For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. Conceptions 
surrounding the true meaning of the season. To many, it is all about money, commercialism, and greed. Others see it as a time for parties, food, and get-togethers. Many children know Christmas only as a time for Santa Claus and presents. As a result, some children have no idea what the true meaning of Christmas is all about. Thank God for the Bible. In His holy, inspired, infallible Word, God sets the record straight where Christmas is concerned. He gives us in no uncertain terms the true reasons for the season. Many say that Jesus is the reason for the season, and this is true. But what does it mean that Jesus is the reason for the season? We find the answer from Holy Scripture. The first thing we, we, we read from verse 11 of our Scripture, Christmas is a time for giving. It is a time for God to give His Son to humanity. When those shepherds heard the words of the angels, they were told that the Savior was coming into the world. This child who was born in Bethlehem was no ordinary baby. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he was literally God in human flesh, according to John chapter 1 and verse 14. All through his life, he proved his distinctiveness. He taught like no other person could teach. He healed, he preached, he loved, he reached out. However, none of these things qualifies him to be Savior. It wasn't enough for God to send His Son into the world, but that same Jesus had to be given up. When John 3.16 tells us that God gave His only begotten Son, that is precisely what He meant. God gave Jesus up to die on the cross for you and for me, so that our sin and death might be paid. And so that we might have the opportunity to be saved from eternal damnation. We are also reminded that it is a, this is a time for humanity to give their souls to God. If we are to give a gift to the Lord, what would it be? Think about it. What can you and I give to God? He doesn't need our money. He can get by without, without, without our talents. In fact, when you get right down to it, none of us really possesses anything. Anyway, it all belongs to God. There is only one true possession we each have, and it is our souls. We have control over them. And if we want to give something to the Lord, then it must be our souls, our lives. It is the only thing we have that we can honestly give to God. We also learn from our scripture that Christmas is a time for good tidings. From our scripture we heard that the angel came with a message of good tidings to the shepherds. The message of the angel was a message of salvation. He came to proclaim the glorious news that his Savior had been born in Bethlehem. This message was a message of hope and it was given to the most hopeless in society, the shepherds. These men were social outcasts. They were considered unclean by their religion. They were the type of men that no one wanted to be around. They were generally forgotten by some elements of their society. However, they had not been forgotten by God. How wonderful that these wretched sinful men were the first to hear the good news that the Lamb of God had been born into the world. It was a message of hope. They were forbidden from seeking God in the temple. But God brought salvation to them in the fields. 
This message, my dear friend, hasn't changed. This is what Christmas is all about. The gospel is still a message of hope. We may feel that we have no hope. We may think that we are beyond the scope of God's saving power. Well, let me tell you today that the door of salvation is standing wide open and that whosoever will may come in and find it. And just as the message was one of hope for those shepherds, that night it is a message of hope for us this morning. It is a chance to begin life again. It is an opportunity to have all our sins washed away. And so we are reminded once more that Christmas is a time for God's amazing grace. These miserable shepherds did not deserve to be the first to hear of Christ's birth, but it was by God's grace that reached out to them in their need. There is not a single individual in this world who deserves anything from God, but God in his great, matchless, marvelous, unspeakable grace reaches out to us in the midst of our sins and calls us to come to him. And so because of what we have received, we are reminded that Christmas is the time to glorify God. After the first angel finished his speech to the shepherds, he was immediately joined by a vast multitude of the heavenly hosts and they lifted their voice to give glory and praise to God. It seems natural that we would respond to God's goodness by glorifying his name. And so Christmas is a tremendous time for the children of God to demonstrate their faith in a meaningful way and not to get caught up with the trappings of the world. Through our Christmas programs, our personal conduct and family functions, we have a wonderful opportunity to show the world just what this season is truly all about. Let us join our voices with those of the angelic hosts and declare the great glory of God. After all, as people of God, that is our duty. This world needs to know the true reason for the season. And so after the shepherds met Jesus, this became their mission. We are told that they went about telling others about him and they returned to their lives glorifying the name of the Lord. What are we doing, my dear friends, this Christmas to glorify the Lord's name? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
to where the babe was laid. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. God sends us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Christ is born. Let us pray. Lord, remind us of the true meaning and purpose of Christmas and all that it meant to humanity of past and those of present and those that are yet to come and remind us oh lord that we must respond by glorifying your wonderful name and lord as we go go with us and may the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest remain and abide with us and all of god's people wherever they may be both now and even forevermore.